as they come up to the stage, I'd like to introduce my panel. To my immediate left is Secretary Jim Wolfe. Uh, Jim is, is, is a 34-year veteran of the Florida Department of Transportation, having spent his entire life there, because he can't be old enough to have been there for 34 years unless he started when he was 12. And he's been in this position as Secretary for District 4, which the county is just to the north of here, since 2005. He's also a board member at the South Florida Regional Transportation Authority, and he's passionate about 750 serving on our executive committee as well. So we thank him for being here today. And uh, in the middle, as the rose between thorns, is Ysela Yort. Ysela is the first female director of the Miami Dade Trans of Miami Dade Transit. And before that, <laughs> yes, some fans in the audience, Ysela. Um, home County, home turf, assistant sound city manager, and a alum of FDOT, uh, where she was Assistant Secretary for Intermodal System Development. So she has a long history of transportation, and I'm glad to welcome her to the panel today. And last but not least, for a private sector look, is Neeson Kasten, who is, uh, presently serves as the Managing Shareholder for Ackerman's Miami office. Neeson and I are, uh, I owe my career at the moment to Neeson. He hired me as Executive Director of ULI about nine years ago. He is also former mayor of Miami Beach, um, currently serves as the vice chair of the board of directors for the Miami DDA, and is a former South Florida Transportation Authority board member. He these days represents an impressive list of major developers involved with transit-oriented development. So we've asked you here for a little private sector view. Commissioner, I'm sorry, Mayor Kristen Jacobs of Broward County sends her regrets. She had a, a matter with a family member this morning and could not be here. So we're going to grill these folks and ask them to take a regional perspective today. I'd, um, I'd like to start with a first question. We've heard lots about uh, uh, transportation and growth and how we're going to have 50% more people here over the next uh, 40 years or so. Make sure your mics are working, guys. Um, and uh, it's... Uh, as, as Victor said, he's just set us up beautifully with congestion and traffic being our number one concern of this audience. So I'd like to ask each of you the same question, and, and uh, uh, Jim will let you start with it, but what is your vision of how Southeast Florida should tackle the issue of mobility in the short run, and by the short run I mean the next 10 years, and in the longer term, the next 40 years? What do you see in your crystal ball for our region's transportation system? You saw some great data. You hear me all right? Am I on? I'm on. Okay. You saw some great data today, but uh, up until about 2007, I would describe transportation in a nutshell by saying that here in South Florida, and I'm talking about Palm Beach County South, we, uh, we have a population growth of about 3%, and each year we build about 1% more lane miles of roads. 3% population, 1% lane mile roads. And that was true for the first 30 years of my career. It was fairly constant. And it had an obvious effect. If you've been here during that period, what you saw was uh, rising traffic congestion. But basically, our transportation solution was to add those 1% lane miles. All that has changed. For the last five years, the economy has been slow. Traffic actually has been level. It's been pretty good. Uh, Actually, I think it flows a little bit better than now that it did five years ago. But ultimately, the economy will improve, and you might assume that we will go back to the conditions of prior 30 years, but we won't. Both sides of that equation are going to be different. And you saw some of that this morning. Uh, the first side is population will not grow at 3%. We were used to that. Uh, it's probably going to be 1% to 1.5% every year. However, our ability to build new lane miles of roadway is going to be almost non-existent. In Miami-Dade and Broward County, there's very little opportunity to economically widen roads. Uh, in Broward County, we have no planning studies underway to widen any arterials. We're done with that. I would expect, oh, that got it. <laughs> 
but the population is going to grow anyway. I, I would not be surprised if, in fact, we have about 1% uh, uh, new lane miles in uh, Miami-Dade and Broward every five years rather than every year. So if we continue our development patterns of the past and continue to try and solve them with those very marginal increases in highway capacity, then we're going to fall behind the curve continually. I was very interested in the survey questions that indi indicated the importance of transit as a, a transportation, as a quality of life issue. So we're in a decline unless we find a new answer because as, as a transportation professional, I cannot tell you an answer to that formula that involves highways. And it's not all about the money. We have a funding crisis in transportation, but it's also about reasonableness of widening more roads. We've reached the limit. Uh, in the Treasure Coast, and I know some of you are from the Treasure Coast, uh, the formula is a little bit different. There is, in fact, an opportunity to build some roads, but there's an absence of uh, the funding to do that. And perhaps if you look south and see the experience uh, in, in, in the three southern counties, uh, I left out Monroe there, the three most urbanized counties, maybe that isn't the direction you want to go in the Treasury Coast. But uh, so that's a long preamble. What is the answer then? And the answer is obviously transit. Uh, in the next 10 years, we need to be continuing the studies that we're doing to develop major premium transit projects, and we have several of those underway. And we also need to be doing our best to continue moving the traffic on our roadways. Uh, for decades, we still see that the majority of our traffic is going to be on highways. Even if that can't be the solution to continued population growth, it's a very important aspect of our transportation system. Uh, near term, we're going to be expanding our network of managed lanes, express lanes like on I-95 in Miami-Dade. You'll see that on a, just about every limited access roadway in South Florida is ultimately going to get those express lanes to give uh, motorists an option of an assured travel time. So we're going to see more of that. That's tinkering with the system. As a big picture, it's not the solution. The solution is going to be transit. Uh, you already heard some enthusiasm for uh, FEC commuter rail. That is a great opportunity. It's a spine that could tie the whole region together. It's a spine that allows some east-west transit to be developed. Uh, Fort Lauderdale's wave can connect to it. It's an opportunity. Uh, you have a chicken and egg issue with, with transit and land development. You can't have transit unless you have density. You can't have density unless you can serve it with transit. And the answer to which comes first is you plan them both together. You make it happen. So the vision with the FEC is largely about land development, that we can service that new population growth with density where it can be served by transit. So that's my 40-year vision, density served by transit.